This is a Walt Disney original little long playing record and I am your Disneyland story reader. I'm going to begin now to read the story of Cinderella. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when Tinkerbell rings her little bells like this. Let's begin now. Once upon a time in a faraway land there lived a lovely young girl named Cinderella. She lived with her nasty old stepmother and two ugly stepsisters who made her do all the housework and who were not nice to her at all. Cinderella had to do all the cooking and washing and cleaning and didn't have any time left for parties or to enjoy herself. But one day an invitation came from the king's palace. A grand ball was being given for the prince of the land and every young girl in the kingdom was being invited. How lovely, thought Cinderella. I shall be able to go too. But her nasty stepsisters didn't think of her at all, but only themselves, as usual. In fact, they found as much work as they could for Cinderella to do. Wash this petticoat, press this dress, brush my hair, find my shoes. They found so much work that poor Cinderella didn't have time to get herself ready for the ball. When she spoke to them about it, they only laughed at her. So they kept her busy all day long. She worked all morning while her stepsisters slept, and all afternoon too while they bathed and dressed. And then, in the evening, she had to help them with their final preparations for the ball. When the coach arrived at the door, the two ugly stepsisters were dressed and ready to leave. But Cinderella was still dressed in her rags. Why, Cinderella, they said, you are not dressed for the ball. No, said Cinderella, I haven't had time, so I suppose I can't go. <coughs> After they had gone, poor Cinderella sat weeping in the garden. Suddenly, a kindly old lady appeared before her. It was her fairy godmother. Hurry, my child, she said. You are going to the ball. As she spoke, the fairy godmother, with a wave of her magic wand, turned a fat pumpkin into a beautiful coach. Then she turned the pet mice into horses, the dog into a fine footman, and the barn horse into a coachman. Cinderella could hardly believe her eyes. There, my dear, said the fairy godmother. Now into the coach with you, and off you go to the ball. But my dress, said Cinderella. Lovely, my dear, the fairy godmother began. Then she really saw Cinderella's rags. Good heavens, she said, you can't possibly go like that. She waved her wand and said the magic words, Salagadula, Menchikabula, Bibiti, Bobbity, Boo. And suddenly, there stood Cinderella in the loveliest dress you ever saw, and tiny glass slippers on her feet. She looked beautiful. <coughs> oh, cried Cinderella, how can I ever thank you? Just have a wonderful time at the ball, my dear, said her fairy godmother. But remember, the magic only lasts until midnight. At the stroke of twelve, the spell will be broken and everything will change back as it was before. I remember, said Cinderella, and stepped into the magic coach and was driven away to the ball. What an occasion it was! The king's palace was ablaze with light. There was music and laughter, and every lady in the land was dressed in her finest clothes. But Cinderella was the loveliest of them all. The prince was spellbound, and never left her side all evening. They danced every dance, had supper side by side, and smiled happily into each other's eyes. <coughs> The time passed so quickly that when the clock began to chime midnight, Cinderella cried, Oh, I almost forgot. Without a word, she ran out of the ballroom and down the palace stairs. On the stairs, one of her glass slippers fell off. But she didn't have time to stop. She jumped into the magic coach and away it sped. 
But as the clock finished chiming, everything changed back, and no one knew where she had gone. Next morning, the news began to spread over the whole kingdom. The prince had vowed that he would marry the beautiful girl whose slipper they had found, and the Grand Duke was going from house to house trying to find the girl who could wear the tiny glass slipper. Every girl in the land tried hard to put the slipper on. The ugly stepsisters tried hardest of all, but none of them could wear it. But where was Cinderella? All this time, Cinderella had been kept locked in her room. For her nasty old stepmother wasn't taking any chance of letting her try on the slipper. Poor Cinderella. It looked as if the Grand Duke would miss her. But her friends, the mice, managed to find the key and pushed it under Cinderella's door. She unlocked the door and ran down the stairs just as the Duke was about to leave. Please, cried Cinderella, please let me try the slipper. And of course, it fitted perfectly, as it was really her own. At last, the prince's long search was over. Cinderella became his bride, and they lived happily ever after. And her pet mice came to live in the palace, and were happy ever after too.